Sheep, anybody have sheep? Not sheep, sheep. <laughs> All right, cool, yeah, cool, yeah. cool. So, everyone here has seen a goat before, right? Huh? Yeah. Fantastic, even today. Yeah. All right, cool. So, all right, so our aim, or the way I look at it, it's better to prevent um, the situation from arising than to deal with it when it comes about because it's going to probably cost you more in dealing with it when it's about the place rather than costing you a minuscule amount before the problem presents itself. So prevention is better than cure as the whole adage goes, right? So if you can picture, we all know about health now because everybody's a health expert when it comes to a pandemic. We're in a pandemic and we know big words like quarantine and isolation and all those fancy things, right? So pretty much um, we want to keep most if not all our animals healthy. So these animals keeping all the good mm -hmm. and healthy stuff inside the bubble and outside you want to keep all the disease stuff outside, right? So we looked at stuff like Lameness, it's raining now, mucky mucky, animals, goats, anybody seeing animals with lim limping, laming, yeah? Alright, great. So, that's one of the issues you need to keep up. What about, let me see, um, anybody have kids right now, our lambs? Yeah? So you need to spray the navel and all of that stuff, right? To keep them healthy. Alright, so, simple, simple thing you can try and remember, S-V-N-P-P-R-R. Or SVN double P double R, um, sanitation, vaccination, nutrition, <coughs> pasture management, parasite control, record keeping, veterinary, frequent veterinary visits. Right, that's just my little checklist for my farmer friends. Right, um, so it's simple to remember it. SVN double P double R. Um, so everyone should know by now generally what a healthy goat looks like versus a sick one. Right. So, for example, we all know what a goat looks like when it's chewing its cud, right? Yes? Alright. And if a goat is not chewing its cud, then that means something is wrong. Right, there we go. Um, another one, another come on and let's look at the stool. So, we all know what goat poo looks like, right? Or sheep poo, right? Nice pelleted farm, right? Alright, so if we're seeing this, we know something is? Wrong. If you're seeing loose tool or diarrhea, something is definitely wrong. Alright, so we won't go through the whole list. Um, but just a few of the disease conditions, the common ones that you probably would see from time to time. Um, acidosis. Did you go through that today, Mr. Brown? Talk about bloat. There we go. Bloat. Alright, so I won't go over that. We all are experts at that right now. Just don't give your goats too much bad feed. But they eat plenty of grass first. Alright, black leg. Affects cattle, but sometimes in sheep and goats as well. And black leg is not a spider. Who thought it was a spider? Raise your hand. Don't embarrass yourself no man. Just raise your hand. You thought it was a spider. It is not a spider. It's <laughs> uh, right. So black leg is a bacteria from one of the cousins of tetanus. Um, and what it does, it pretty much enters the wounds of animals and cause gas production in, in those pockets of the muscle and you can feel it. You, you know when you get a, a gift from foreign and it wrap up in that plastic paper that would like bubble to burst wrap. as children. Bubble wrap. The bubble wrap, yeah man, it sounds just like that. Air, fill the air, that's what black leg does, it produces. So black leg is a bacteria, not the spider. So tell your uncle Sam say, don't come having the pasture, it's to help eat grass, not to kill black leg, alright? Cool. Um, <laughs> This bottom one is a big word, you might not remember it, but let's just call it Brachiaria sensitivity. We have Brachiaria up here, Mr. Brown? Not much. No, no, no not much. Not much. We're gonna go through black leg, tetanus, and teratoxema. Those are cousins. So we have a vaccine. We brought it, Mr. Brown? Yeah, we did. I showed him. I showed him. Got a Covex in it. You have to vaccinate the animals. Alright, you see them? The more you get vaccinated pretty soon next year for COVID. You have a vaccinated animals against oh. black leg and tetanus. Not your animals against COVID, but you. <laughs> right? Alright, so this bottom one is a is a is a one that you'll see with bacteria and these are the signs. So pretty much what you have is the animal that are generally has less pigmentation, white or light brown, or has some patches of white in the back. When they eat a lot of bacteria, particularly in the dry season, you'll find that they will not be able the, the liver is not able to to break down the metabolites from the bacteria so it goes to the bloodstream and when you send them out to pasture in the sunlight 
what you have happening is that the sunlight reacts with the metabolites in the skin, in the, in the, in the blood vessels, and you cause what we call photosensitization. So you have a reaction where the skin and the hair just peels off, breaks off into sores, um, the face becomes puffy and fat, and all the inflammation and stuff. So this is like early stage. You haven't seen the, the hair on, on the face or the back peeling off yet. But it happens all the time. It happens all, especially in ghosts that are light colored. So it's something to keep in mind, right? You mean you're talking go to the pink and make pigmentation? Less pigmentation, yes, yes. The, the, the darker ghosts tend to survive it out a little. Uh, next condition that's most famous. Anybody discuss bottle jaw? No? Alright, so bottle jaw, anybody was underneath the neck of the goats or the cow or the sheep? Alright, so anybody has any idea what? What? Anything about that? You know anything about that? Anybody wants to throw an idea what the potential cause is or what they think is going on? When they see that? Mums. Mums? Mums? What, what is mums? Forgive me, me young. What is mums? Alright, so we're going to come to battle job. We're going to come to the next one, seal. We're going to come to diary and we're going to come to lice. But before we move on, let me just touch on lice. Um, so for me, I'm and Mr. Brown, and I guess if you're a trained farmer, if you walk into a goat herd or pen and the goats are nice and relaxed, and you just find. So these are my horns, right? I just find a goat that's doing this. Yeah, I'm scratching back. That's right. And I'm using foot and just. Yeah. You know what? And I'm go back to training because I'm just doing this again. And you look around the corner, another one doing the same thing. And you look up the up, up the stairs, another one doing the same thing. Just take a minute just to restrain the animal and just look, just part the hair with your fingers and run your hand along the back of the animal and see if you see a tiny, tiny insect or insects running. They may vary in color, maybe dark as as this prime as this priming color, or they may be as light as the chair to match the color of the coat of the animal. But light is very important. Let's picture you. Remember. I don't know, you look, you look, you, you, you could be my, or my grandfather, right? 70 year old. All right, all right, 70 year old, right? So, you remember back in the day, they used to have, human used to have lice and scabies, and scabies yeah. is still around. So if you are constantly itching, you don't want to do anything, all right? You don't want to eat, you don't want to go to work, you don't want to go to school, you don't want, nobody talk to you. Yeah, that's the goat right there. So, pay attention to that. It can cause loss in production and production time, all right? So this is, an abscess. Doc, doc, you're going to be out to treat it or to... Lies? Okay, it thank you, Ver Mr. Constable. Yes. Uh, that was an association, police name. Um, right, so how you deal with, with, with lice or ticks, ectoparasites in general? You have a couple um, chemicals to utilize. Um, I don't have much faith in supermission, but if that's what you have, sure. Um, another good one. Pardon? Supermetrin. It's a tick wash. You have it. It's a brown bottle, yellow label, famous in farm stores. Right? Um, but another good one is Amitic, which Hypro has. And it replaces Triatics. Anybody know Triatics? Alright, so Triatics is no longer on the market, but Amitic is, is, is the new and baddest kid around. Alright? So Amitic, one and a half teaspoon to a gallon, and then you bathe the animal, spray the pens, not only the animal, spray the pen because the, the eggs live in the crevices and the corners and so forth, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm eating, right? I feel like a lump in my jaw, hopefully it's not a lot. So this is what? You mix this with water? Right, right. one and a half or one, one teaspoon to a gallon of water. Really? And you go to you spray the goat, but also spray the environs that the goat lives in. I'm eating. Yes, I'm mean spraying the environment, the, the pen, or the, where would that goat sleeps at night, all right? Um, so an abscess can be caused by a number of things. So this one more likely it's it's not close to the ears or the shoulders, right in the center, the side of the neck. Could be an injection site, right? Bacteria introduced and the body just choose to ward it off. This one is probably caused by a bacteria, right? So it's right there where we call a lymph node. You know, that it, you have colon and doctor say tonsil and swell up, something similar to that that they go has, right? Lymph node inflamed because of a contagious bacteria called CLA. All right, so you're here and you may call me and I can't come. So how do you deal with it, right? So you need to, first of all, if you identify this, an abscess under the jaw, um, if it's a male, you may find it on the testicle, um, female on the other, AKA breast. We call, for animals, we call breast other, right? Forgive me. 
We'll learn a new term, right? Yeah. Other. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so, yeah, you need to isolate the animal because more likely than not, it can spread. And if the abscess bursts on its own, the contents of it can be very catchy to the other animals, right? What about humans? Yeah. Can be transferred to humans? No. Um, there is very little evidence to say that it can be transmissible to humans. Um, so yeah, you want to take the animal one side, once you feel it and it's nice and ripe. Um, anybody has a girlfriend that likes to burst bump in you know them face? Yeah, nobody now hold of them hand, but uh, them sit down right here, so. Alright, so, so, you feel it if it's nice and ripe, and if it's nice and soft, then it's possibly ready to be lanced and drained. If it's hard, it's probably not ready, you need to give it some time, alright? So by lance you mean cut. By cut. Right, right, right. right. So <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah man, yeah man. Yeah, fair enough. Alright, so we like to do the abscesses. So this is a right here is a, is a circumscribed area. So you realize the person didn't shave on the side or at the back or at the top. They shaved underneath the bottom. Anybody know why? Want to guess why? Right, so it can drain out properly when you finish cutting. Right? So you use your iodine after you shave and you sanitize the area and you make a C or a U or a T. If you make a one slit, tomorrow morning you're going to seal it back. Oh. Right? That's, that's the body's magic of healing. Right? So you have to make a T or a upside down C, which is a U, technically. Right? Yeah. Or a sideways C, a sideways U. Alright? And you Put the contents it's important that you put the contents in a bottle or a container that you can remove and take for burning because remember we don't want all that pus to be in contact with the other goods right all right so so you said caused by a what by a bacteria, bacteria. give a different uh, name it's too long uh, no no the, the, how, how, how how it comes by oh it's, oh, it's, oh. it's in the environs abroad they vaccinate against it we don't do that here it's in the dirt, it's in the environment. It's in the environment. So, 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 so That's why you don't make it go on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Because it actually is transmitted. Yeah. From so the you, 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 when you're lancing, you're lancing, you cut it in a cutter bottle and, and get somebody to hold the goat and squeeze it in it. Or you do it on a cardboard or feedback that you can take up and burn it. Right? Um, also, um, well, I don't know if I should say this, but one of the treatments that I've seen is using formaldehyde and inject it. Is that something practiced? You give Jamaicans an inch and they take a mile. Yeah. So yeah, I stay away from the harsh stuff of life. <laughs> because I don't want to tell you to do this and in your car and kill off your goat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or you know, the, the, the news had it a couple months ago that a certain group of people in Jamaica who like quick money were using formaldehyde in their spliff to get high. Yeah, stay away from formaldehyde people. All right, it's carcinogenic. It causes cancer. It's no good. All right. But 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 uh, isn't that the thing that they use on uh, embalm the dead? Sir, stay away from it, sir. It causes cancer. Amen. <laughs> Unless you own a funeral home, right? Yeah. All right. So take so, one, 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 one before you go. Mm -hmm. So so if I use it. Mm -hmm. To, to, to treat me animal, right? Um, it can affect me. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's, very, it's very, very. The fumes alone can knock you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I worked in a lab for a year, and I'm wondering if I'm suffering some of it. Okay. Yeah. Daria, we spoke about Daria earlier, right? Um, Mr. Mr. Brown is on the ball, man. He wants to enjoy his birthday. All right. So tapeworm can cause diarrhea. Um, roundworm tapeworm can cause diarrhea, right? And these are generally in the in the intestinal tract. All right, so we have some drugs that you can use. So anybody know Benvet? Anybody ever heard of Benvet? Great. So this is the replacement for Benvet. Benvet, I don't think it will be on the market for much longer if it's still on the market. So Val Bazen is the new kid on the block kicking out Benvet. They also have Xerofen as well. You can put in the feed. Um, yeah. Um, so it's important though. Anybody ever drench a goat or give a goat an injection for de deworming? Yes? So, do you, when you're administering a dewormer, do you give as is on the label or how, how do you go about it? What's the dose rate? As is on the label. As is on the label, it works for you? Generally? It huh? On the advice of the vet. On the advice of the vet, great. 
There you go. On the advice yeah, of the best. Right. I like because he's on he's on he's on camera. Live streaming. Global. So he has to be careful. Politically correct. Right. Globally there is what we call anti-minting resistance, meaning that the worms have become smarter. Become resistant over the years. Just as all ticks and super merchants don't work again, yeah, the worms have become smarter. So you have to kind of double the dose a little bit. Right? To make it more efficient efficient or effective so by doubling the dose i mean literally two times the dose so if it says one ml for every 10 pounds if you double it how much ml are going to give for 10 pounds mm -hmm. there we go simple mathematics right don't need a calculator so you don't have anything that you can interchange with right so you have to also rotate your wormer so if you're using levox for the next two sessions for the third or the fourth session you want to change with to your valve as an or, or or something so let's move on down the line pregnancy top senior um, one is very common if your goats are in poor condition before the buck touch them um, then when they conceive they'll have difficulty they'll have difficulty um, nourishing themselves and the fetus inside so you find that they'll use all the fat stores and just draw down during the pregnancy and they can potentially die right called ketosis or pregnancy toxin especially found when you have <coughs> twins when you have a twin 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 or triplet pregnancy there you go can be caused by bacteria, too much of the wrong bush, young grass. young grass, let the grass mature. If it's lush and green and pretty, it, it's just 12 days the grass just starts spring up because of the rain. Give it, give it, a, give it a 21. Mr. Brown? Six weeks. Yes. He gave us a six, six week period. Okay. There we go. Right. No, no, you see, I leave the requisite questions to the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody has, has a goat, has seen a goat on the road or on the farm look like this at some point, right? um loose stool again on the floor don't ignore it the goat is talking to you the goat doesn't speak english patois or french it speaks by communicating to you through what it does very important right so this goat was this is a kid and it was nice and lively and it was with its mother and it was sucking milk and getting lots of milk and it got milk in the eyes anybody believe that Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good, right? This is not milk in the eyes, folks. This is indicating anemia. So this is the mucous membranes of a goat. Alright? Um well white, right? So along so you tend to see this happening with something else, the bottle jaw and the pale mucous membrane. So if I roll down my, my eyelids, you see look, look below my eyeball, you see a pink, a pink membrane, right? Right, that's the called the mucous membranes. Yeah, so you can see the mucous membranes on the gum line. Um, in whiter goats, in pigmented goats, it's more difficult to see on the gum line. But the, the eyes don't lie. Right. So this is this is really pale. This is white as a chair. Right. The goat is anemic, <coughs> suffering. Gums telling the story again. Right. Suffering. Poor kid. Wants to thrive. Doesn't want to clearly doesn't want to go for Christmas, but wants to thrive. If you're a butcher. You notice that, that this animal is just pain in the muscle areas. So that's what anemia, the effects of anemia, right? The blood stores are, are low or non-existent, almost non-existent. And remember this bag I told you about under the, under the mandible under the jaw? Yeah. You see right there, all that white fluidy area. So that's an indication of anemia too? Yeah, so it could be most likely stomach worm is high on your list. Those worms, they suck blood in the stomach. So that's how you get the anemia. Yeah, barber pole worm, yeah. Alright, so anyone has ever seen has anyone seen this in Jamaica before? Normal. Yes. Yeah. Foot and mouth is not in Jamaica Arf. folks. Keep it out. This is called ARF. If you don't if you can't remember the three letter word, remember sore mouth or scabby mouth, alright? Yeah, but it's very catchy, very contagious. Again, another condition where if you see your animal with it, isolate your animal. We all know what isolate means now, right? We see it on news every evening. Isolate the animal. Put him one side because it's going to spread. Alright? So you can see it around the mouth, on the ears, around the anus. But guess what? This guy is your best friend, Ectoline Spray. What? You showed it today? No, we don't have, we don't have uh, one 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 any, Anyone knows Ectoline, right? Most persons here know Ectoline, great. So, because these sores are going to break off after a few days, these plaques are going to break off and leave sores. You don't want the flies to lay eggs. Right? So you have to use the Ectoline Spray around the mouth, wherever on, wherever on the body it is. Um, vitamins, put vitamins in the water as well because you know, if, if you have a... It's also, with, with your, when you have children with that around, 
you shouldn't let the children play because it can actually right. So what so, do you call the word? I mean, zula, zula, zoonotic. Zoonotic. Right, right. So it's so, zoonotic. So it's it's possible that that, that if you have a weak immune system, system, you could have a similar lesion so on, on your on your hands. Play with the um, vitamins. So if you think of yourself having a blister, right, in the morning, what do you call it? Morning fever. So I'm calling it night fever. You don't want to eat. It's painful to open your mouth, right? So think of the goat with that debilitating condition. Think of this little fellow with this condition, right? He doesn't want to open his mouth to suck or to eat. Um, so what I want you to do if you encounter this condition in your sick bay in an isolation pen, put some vitamins in the water along with spraying the ectolyte. What the vitamins will do is pep up the appetite. When you, when you give your little baby some vitamins, crave, not true? Yeah, yeah man, grocery bill done in a one day. All right, so the folks, serious stuff. On the anus, Ectoline is your best friend. Um, coughing, anybody has ever heard of animals coughing before? Yeah. All right, so animals can cough for a number of reasons, whether it's bacterial, pneumonia, viral pneumonia, just being totally greedy with the feed, a lot of dust inhaling, or dusty environment in general. That's a treatment for, yeah. for pneumonia. Um, it depends on the cause. But generally, if it's a situation that I hear it in your herd, then clearly it's telling me that some, it's something contagious. Um, most likely bacteria. Could be also viral. So we may treat it with some drugs. I may recommend a, a drug or two um, to go along with it. And also some measures as well. So for example, if it's a dusty hay you get from the truck this week, Mr. Brown will tell you, dump it with a little water, with molasses water, to make it kind of appealing. All right? But you want to keep down the dust. All right, so some antibiotics, if you call me, I can tell you, based on what I, the questions I ask, I can tell you what to administer. All right, uh, pink eye, yeah, ghosts get pink eye, right? But you need an antibiotic appointment for that as well. Uh, navel ill from the goat is born, day one, you need to take care of that navel. Spray that navel with ectoline. Spray that navel with ectoline, dip in iodine, sorry. Dip in iodine and then spray in ectoline. All right, it's important. It will save your whole heap of money down the road. Day one, spray that navel. Uh, foot rot. So we spoke about foot rot and the muck muck earlier. Um, and so what happens is that if you think of your fingernail as it, as the goat's claws, constant exposure to moisture and wetness is going to cause a breakdown or weakening of the tissue. And with that, you're going to have softening of that horny tissue, and it's gonna it may crack, it may, it may lean to one side, and also in between the claws you may have. Um, that wetness may cause a dermatitis between the toes. All right, so as I said, you're gonna have a little mini infection here. This can actually pick up maggots, so you need to pay attention to this. Ectoline again is your best friend. All right, um, so here you see this farmer never paid attention to this goat for a whole year. Like, this goat never got a money or a penny in its life. Um, trimming a goat's foot is not necessarily the, how you want to trim it, it's about the comfort of the goat. So for example, if I if these are my these are one of my foot and these are my two claws and one is longer than the other, it doesn't mean you're gonna cut both of them at the same measurement, right? Because the damage may be way extending the other than one, right? So you have to trim it according to the conformation of the animal and the comfort of the animal. When you put it back down, you see how the animal stances, it's alright, the animal is fine. Maybe I have to revisit it in a month's time. Alright? So never never use a flat line to say, okay, cut straight, go and go. No. All it's about the comfort of the animal. Alright, so you it's best if you get that leg back if you want to get someone to assist you to restrain that goat upside down on the side or whatever, but get that leg back and cut away what we call the horny tissue. So wherever you see white, white is good. Wherever you see wherever you start seeing pink means you're close to blood vessels. Stay away, right? It's gonna start bleeding. So you want to pay attention to the heel, to the toe and to the sole, right? So you can see all of this flap here was is, is overgrown. Alright, so this one is done already. The farmer is now doing this one. Alright, cut the edges, cut the toe, cut the heel. Alright, but as I said, when every time you cut, you put down the foot to see how the stance of the animal is. Alright, right? so tetanus is a major, major thing. Covexin 8 again. Lock jaw, right? Anybody ever seen anybody with lock jaw? It's not a nice thing when goats have it though. Alright, it's almost like no return. Um, I never seen return. Yeah, yeah, like no return, literally. Tetanus stuff. Right. Never yeah, so it's important for you to vaccinate the animals here. Keep up to date and do your record keeping. Whenever you do that vaccination, please record it 
So the vet turns up to the farm, he knows what was done and knows how best to advise him. So in the interest of time, tetanus is caused by one of Black Plague's cousins and it gets into wounds sometimes by ingestion but also via cuts as well. So it's an anaerobic bacteria, right? So it causes, begins a little spasm and then the animal just becomes stiff. And Mr. Bernard says he's never seen it return. To be honest, I've never seen it return. Never seen, yeah, no, yeah, never, never seen the animal return. Never seen the animal return. <laughs> never seen the animal return. Yeah. Once right? they get it, yeah. it's yeah. difficult to treat. It's you can spend all the money in the world on medication. It's all yeah. 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 Um, especially, it hurts if it's a prized animal. It, it is, yeah. And it always happens to the best yeah. and the most prized it, it, animal. It, hurts, it, really, it really hurts if it's a prized animal. Best animal in your pen. That's where it usually hits. So, this is Mr. Bernard's disease of hate, interest, enterotoxemia, again a cousin of black plague, a cousin of tetanus, sudden death. So, and this happens to your best animal in your pen. So, so, so you, 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 have, you have 20 heads of goats, you know the ones who are the leaders, right? You know the bully, right? Yeah. Box for everybody I want, the whole plate, the whole trough for themselves, right? That animal is probably more prone to enterotoxemia than the one who is always the victim, right? So it's called sudden death because what happens is that usually the animal eats more than the others. Especially the bag feed. The bag feed, yeah. yeah man, yeah. Rice, people, people who work near factories or have containers of rice. Brewer's green. Yeah. Brewer's green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything starchy. Any, especially starchy food. Yeah, be careful of that. So, so that bacteria is actually in that feed. That's what you're saying. Is it the it's, eating? What it does is the, the, the bacteria is in small amounts inside the animal. Mm -hmm. but when you encourage, when, when you eat a lot of that, you encourage feeding, the feeding, feeding and feeds that bacteria. So you're feeding the good ba the bad bacteria, bacteria then, in other words. Yeah. So that bacteria is suppressed with the good bacteria. But then you have a reverse, you flip, so you have the good bacteria being suppressed with the bad bacteria. It's just going to kill the animal. It goes to the blood circulatory system, it goes to the brain, the dead animal. Very quickly. Um, very quickly, yeah. So again, something that's going to attack a prized animal. Oh, dear son. All right, go oh, eat. No, right? Somebody's gonna eat more than he or she should, right? Uh, bloat, you guys are experts on bloat again, but again, even if you come home and didn't see the goats eating a barrage of concentrates, but you come home one evening and uh, can hardly walk and lying down on its side, stiff, you know, discomfort, great unease, highly likely it's bloat, right? Um, so a couple stuff can be a friend, mineral oil, no bloat or gaseous food from your farm store. Or everybody has baking soda in their kitchen. Should. Everybody should have baking soda, right? <laughs> Two teaspoons to a liter. And you drench that and drench that drench that goat with it. Um a liter of water. So probably like 60 ml, a couple times in an hour. And that should neutralize the pH and the reaction inside. So bloat again is no joke. Abortive diseases, yes, goats can have abortion too. The same reproductive system just like humans, right? Um, and abortion can be from a number of causes. Um, these are big words, but out of all of them, you must have, must have heard about leptospirosis, right? Um, rats, 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 not good. Um, if you have cats, you may, be want to, you may want to think twice about toxoplasmosis. Um, Vibriosis, chlamydia again. Yeah, but goats can get a bash on as well. And uh, yes. I think that's it for my presentation. One of the things you say I like to, yeah. I, I know, um, I don't know if Doc endorse me, but I will say that your aim in life is not to be using drugs. I mean, you might have to use them sometimes, but you should be aiming to keep healthy animals. You need, that is your aim, because you don't want to call the vet. You want to keep your animals healthy. We talk about nutrition. Make sure you're up on your nutrition. Make sure your environment. We talk about the environment like not making the goat go out in the pasture when it is wet and the muddy conditions and you know the different environments that can affect your goat. Because you know with good management, when you have very, very, very good management of the animals, you almost don't need to work them. You can actually, you know, is if you were to do best practices in everything, excellent management, you don't have to worm your animals. I don't even worm my animals. Maybe once, maybe once a year are very, very rare. 
that I ever, and when you go to worm animal, I will only check and only an animal that needs to be wormed that I will worm. And you know what happens? You see if I have an animal and I worm him and I go have to worm him another time, I call him, I get rid of him, I don't want him in the pen. So your aim must be for excellent management practices. Good nutrition. Like me and you, you know, when we eat properly and we take good care of ourselves, do we get sick? No, you really don't get sick. You know, it's when you don't take care of yourself now, all the bacteria and the flu and everything coming at you and attacking you. So we need that's why the management is so important. I have one question. I guess I'll finish this question. If nobody else has any other question, oh well. Okay. Um, most persons here, they are fresh new to this boat area, right? Um, in terms of health care and taking care of the animals. Um, what are the top three, you know, most important things that they need to do just coming in? They don't know, they don't know much. How, how, you know, what would you reiterate to them that they have to do to make sure that? Um, nutrition is one. Pay attention key. to that. That's yeah. key. Um, Hygiene. That, that's so. I put sanitation in sanitation. all of that. So how? Yeah, I think that, that's that's one. So they have to clean the pen and all that. Clean the pen, but also make sure it, it provides adequate shelter and also um, shelter from the elements. Um, it don't make sense you build a shelter with more, more right. uh, water draining. Yeah, it defeats the purpose. Slatted floors. Um, slatted, so slatted floors is better. Again, another preventative yeah. measure to minimize your worm burden. Right. Your animals. Housing and uh, a navel. Oops. Okay, so I, I put it as simple as basic, but take care of that navel. Take care of that navel. So, so alright, so this is the situation on the ground right here now. They are bringing the animals out to feed in, 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 the, in the community. In the community, Passions. right. How would you advise them to manage that situation? Very well. So, if you're, if you're, if you're seeing animals that are limping, the animal is, those animals are staying indoors. They're not supposed to go out until, so you're gonna, they're gonna undergo a series of treatments for a couple of days, and they're not going to, they're not touch more. I think they should Just, have to have a, a sick bay thing. They're, right? they're gonna be in a sick bay. Right. They're sick gonna be in a sick bay. Yes. But remember, remember, that was one of the suggestions, right? Yes. Sick bay, isolating because it's going to spread. Right. So right? once you recognize that something is wrong with the animal, whether they um popping or yeah. Put that animal aside. And inspect the animal. Find out exactly right. what's going on. Sometimes it may be a little nail. It could be a, a little marker that uh, went in. Can be a cut. Can be a cut somewhere. But just inspect the animal and, and try to treat it. Okay. Uh, copper sulfate, um, OTC, antibiotic powder in water, and ectoline spray. Right? Just to, to, to hasten the healing process. So you're going to cut grass, give to the animal, water for the animal because the animal will not be going up for the next couple of days. Um, and yeah, if it's if it's consistently raining in a week or two, then probably you probably you want to alternate days in which you, you, you send them out to pasture because if it's contagious and then the animals are constantly in the moisture, then other animals are gonna come down in the same condition as well. So just just improvise some strategy as as as, as it goes to that. I don't know how, how often or how available cutting grass is here, but you probably can try it. If they see, right, if, they, if they see, first, well, uh, don't pour coming, you know, yeah. it's raining heavily. Like don't bring out storm. animals. Like a tropical storm is, is, is on the horizon. And that's, that's why for the conservation. Yeah. All the conservation yeah. with yeah. Mr. Brown and I talk. Have some storage. So yeah. Have yeah. to have feed. Yeah. If you see the rain, store. Yeah. Yeah. Pull out the hay and yeah. get them. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. that's yeah. when you want to feed. You have an acre land plant, it's a picking grass, and buy a sharpening machine. Alright, I have two questions, but okay. Why are you guys were talking about feeding out the animal, grazing? Shouldn't you implement like a, a biosecurity system Very for important. animals that graze so that they don't bring back in any disease? Very important. Very important. Um, yes. Um, so 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 I'm I'm not sure if everyone here has structured pastures or it's a case that you just send them out to the inside to graze for three hours and they come back up. You walk them back down. Yeah, and that's the problem. Go somewhere that other animals go. Yeah, feed them. You can't really do that. Right. Yeah. So yeah. um, it's very difficult to do that, but by security measures that you can implement on the farm <coughs> um, can include a foot bath. As, as, as simple as it through. looks, to walk through copper sulfate, and it, that would also help in hardening the hoofs. That like constant walking through every day would help to harden the hoof as well. Um, you, as, an, as a farmer, should, 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 how often? No, I said also do walk through the, the solution as well. Oh, right, right. To disinfect your footwear. As a yes. footbath. It's your footbath as well. But also as a farmer, as farmers, 
We live in a world where a disease can spread quickly. We all see how we're all, we're all impacting by, by Corona right now and see how the rapid spread of Corona. Um, you should be very careful and be conscious, be mindful of going to Clarendon, going to Westmoreland and visiting your friend's farm and then coming back just in your goat house like that. Change your clothes, show up and deal with your animals first. Or if John Doe is coming to visit you and visit your goats, to... yeah, um, he should have some, some form of respect or you should have some protocol that you should have regard for. You have to be careful. All right, second question. From a layman's perspective, if I have some goats say I have, and I need to vaccine, how do I go about it? And what's the ratio and so forth? Okay, so so COVID in eight, they're, they're yeah. MSD. So MSD has, I think it's MSD that makes Covex in plus. But we, we Hypro carries Covex in eight, and we advocate that you vaccinate your animals if it's the first time you're doing vaccination from three months old upwards. Everybody's gonna get five ml of Covex in eight. Um, in the neck muscle, you can go subcutaneously as well. By that I mean layman term under skin. All right, if you've never seen it done, All right, you are going to so train. You, you vaccinate with 5 ml. Uh, 5 ml, so 5 ml today, for instance, right. and then six weeks later, 2 ml. And, and then after the subsequent to that, it's a yearly boost of 2 ml, okay. according to the stipulations on the, on, on the label. All right. Um, yeah, and that's it. So okay. so if, if, you're, if you have a problem, then that would minimize my differential list if I come on your farm. You're saying you're having an issue then. I'd rule out all those the potential diseases that we would have vaccinated against, such as your enterotoxemia and your tetanus and, and your black blood. And, so and forth. usually, uh, it's and the young kids. Is the young kids that suffer from it first? The young, yeah, the tetanus thing. It's the young kids. That's where the danger is. It's not really so much the mature goat, but the young kids. Vaccinate. Vaccinate. No, vaccination. Vaccination is better than cure. Vaccinate. Vaccinate. Well, what is, is no cure. What, what do you mean you want to put it here? Yes, it's an injectable. Yeah, okay. just like what oh, we get over vaccine. So if you if you if you're not coming out injecting an animal, vaccinating, um sure we can probably set up a training session. We should we should we should we should set up. I I asked, asked uh, Mr. Brown about it because I tell you the truth, I've been getting a ton load of calls about it. A lot of people are calling me and asking me about vaccination. I guess because of COVID and all of that. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. want to vaccinate the animals. How can you vaccinate? And guess what? I don't want none of us to play vet because it is actually illegal if I came to your farm and vaccinate your animals. Am I right, Doc? Sure. Uh, it is illegal. You can get lock up. It's border lighting that. Yes. Yeah. It is very serious. So there are some people who also play vet and go vaccinating, vaccinating and giving injection yeah, to other people's animals. Borderline and charge. Yeah, that's it is illegal. Illegal. It is illegal. Mr. Brown and I have to be even careful about what we say. We can't even just talk anything that we want to talk. I can talk about probably vaccinating my goat, but I can't go talk about vaccinating Mr. Brown goat. As Mr. McHugh, my character veterinarian division. But him can say anything he wants to say because he's a vet certified, a licensed vet. So remember that. Remember that, guys. And you know something? You have a lot of people playing vet. A whole heap of people playing vet and you have to be careful. So Doc will come and say, yeah man, you do this some man and, and him tell him two things. And the next thing you know now, you know, this man here turn an expert. <laughs> and when him turn the expert now, him go and him say, oh yes man, and him injecting and him don't know what is wrong with the goat and he's not trained. Him don't know. know. And he's not professionally trained to identify all the diseases. You know, so it's good for us to know and understand what is happening on your farm, the different diseases and all of that. But you do need the have, services have, of a vet. Have a, have a relation, you must have a, have a relationship with a vet. Licensed, registered and a vet. Licensed, registered and a licensed re not a vet tech or any of those other words. A vet. And, and this is your guy. This is your guy. And this is your hyper person. Dr. Maku. He is yeah. actually hyper. My number is 564 2677 write down the number 564 2677 right. if you don't get me by calling me on a regular call just send me a whatsapp message i'll try to respond as soon as possible so when you when you're when you're sending uh oh. the message now just you can say hey william speed farmers group yeah, yeah, so he knows that um yeah. I, this I, is I, where yeah, this is where the company all right is yeah and and he is ipro he has been um 
he has been given all responsibilities for good because they have what? You have about four vets at um, High Pro, and I think you are solely responsible for good. Am I correct? Not solely, but um, I think he's solely we, we, responsible. We, we, we work in tandem. No, I think he's solely responsible for good. So it falls under his purview. That's me saying that. <laughs> So, thank you for listening. Thank you for your attention. Yes, guys, we leave it. You know, I think we should sing happy birthday for Mr. Brown today. It's his birthday. Wait first. Wait first? All right. No, too much. I run away. We can't leave, Mom. We can't leave. We can't leave. We can't for Hello. helping me put all, the, all this together. I could not have done it without you, sir. And for you to be here on your birthday when you could be having fun with all of them girls running around. Hello, the girl is here with me. I thank you so much. And I present you as a beautiful young lady to present you. You guys are too nice. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Thank you so Here's much, guys. Job. Really appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you, thank too, sir. Next up, quickly, then we'll run. I'm going to have to leave. Thank you, Rob. Respect and thank you. Yes, my great work for them. Dr. Matthew, on behalf of the Social Service Ministry of the Seventh-day Church of God International Ministry, we want to say thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us today. We truly appreciate this and we will definitely be in contact. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, we can't, we can't, we can't. Let's go for the cameras. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Yes, I know. And the Williamson community would love to say thank you so much for sharing with us. You are here from morning and we really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much all and it was a pleasure to share um, the knowledge with all of you. Yes, yeah, it's the one, you know. Tabernacle is our dear one. Dear one. Yes. All right. And it was it was so good to be here with you once again. Yes. All right. Yes. Oh. Yes. Thank you so much for the wonderful job. Thank you so much. Yeah. Feel like Mr. Collins, Mr. Rada, Mr. Rada. Yes, Mr. Rada, Mr. Whitmer. Mr. Witter, thank you so much for being here today. We truly appreciate your presence and what you share with us. Yes, I'm going to go. Yes, Bandu. On behalf of the Social Services Ministry, we want to express our sincere gratitude to you for spending the day with us and for um, imparting your knowledge to us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you as well, and I really do hope to be working with you. Thanks. Awesome. Thank awesome. you for having me. Thanks. All right. We also we also want to thank Miss Justine Bailey, Tapanach Farm. 
We don't dare partnership in with us. None of this would be possible today. We also want to thank the social service ministry team and you trainees for being here. We thank you also for being here. And we'll be here again in January for more training so you'll get further information and all the technical team that was here from morning with us until now. Thank you so much, thank you so much, thank you so much. Big up top and out for the we give us so much, so much knowledge as to how to construct our goat house and so much. Boy, I'm going to tell you the, the, the big man for the Tapanash farm is a godsend to us. <laughs> Who is that? Mr. Constable? <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Mark Constable. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Really, really yes. out of this world, you yes. know, what he has done yes. here. Yes. And the time and effort that he has put into this project. Yeah, man. Begin with